Lombardo in Pilot with Hogsmeade. And this video is to help take you from just unboxing your airplane through building it and flying your model for the first time. RC is an incredible sport. It's a sport that I love and one that can be done safely and easily if you have the right tools to get you from point A to point B. This hobby is easier than it looks and it's a whole lot of fun. So today, we're gonna teach you how to fly your first RC airplane. Well, it all starts here. My new Bixler 3 has arrived in the mail, all neatly packed in the box. And all we have to do is assemble. This is a plug and play, which means that we should be able to just snap most of the aircraft together. Well, here are all the components laid out. All the small pieces, landing gear, elevator, rudder. It's all here. All we need now is a few basic tools and we're gonna go print out the owner's manual and get started. As you can see here, I've just printed out a couple of pages from the manual on one sheet. It's very easy to follow. All the steps are right here. And again, very, very simple. We're not gonna bore you with the whole build, but here we are adding a little glue. Assemble the rudder and elevator and let that dry. We're gonna put in a couple of hinges that it required snap together the wing, put the wing on the fuselage, and there's a couple of little special bolts to hold the wing on, quick connects. We're gonna glue together the wheel pants for the landing gear. Finally, we're gonna put on the uh, prop nut and the propeller. This plane is now complete. It took less than 45 minutes, and it was built by a 16-year-old boy and his mother with no building experience. Now we're going to start making the connections on the receiver starting with the throttle. This is the ailerons. At this point we're going to bind the radio to the receiver. That way just plugged in all the uh, leads and this is how we're going to enable the receiver or the transmitter to communicate with the airplane once it's in flight. So we're going to plug in the battery. At this point you can see our receiver is flashing and I'm gonna take my transmitter, I'm gonna hold the bind button and turn the transmitter on. And it is going to bind with the receiver. You'll watch it flash orange. And when it stops flashing, and you hear the beeps, you can let it all go. The light is now solid orange. That means it is completely bound with the radio. And as you can see, the flight surfaces are moving. Okay, the first thing we have to do is check the direction of all of the flight controls. So the first thing we're gonna do, this stick is for the elevator. When I pull back, this surface is supposed to deflect up. And as you can see, it's correct. When I push forward, it's gonna go down. So this is correctly oriented. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is we're going to need to set this, so this little movement here, so it's level with the surface like that. Right now it's situated a little low, so we're gonna to have to make a few adjustments to make sure at its natural position, it's not deflected up or down. We are going to do it mechanically by adjusting this little clevis here. We are going to uh, turn it a few turns out, and that is gonna lengthen the, uh, the rod and allow this thing to sit level. So as you can see, we're turning it a few turns counterclockwise, so that when we reattach it, it will probably sit level. If not, we'll make some more adjustments. After the adjustments, you can see that it is sitting exactly level. Now we're looking at the rudder. And as you can see, when I push left on the rudder, the rudder is coming towards us, which is the wrong direction. When we push left on the rudder, the actual surface is supposed to go in that direction. So we're gonna have to make an adjustment on the radio to make sure when we push left, the airplane will turn left. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to push this button and hold it for a second. And you can see it says servo setup. So we're going to click on that. And you can see the uh, it says reverse. So we're going to click on that. And we are now adjusting the rudder, which is channel 4. And we are going to change number 4 from normal to reverse. And click on it. And... Now we're done. Now as you can see, when I push left on the stick, the rudder goes to the left as it's supposed to. Okay, this is the aileron control. 
Now, when I push the aileron to the right, the right aileron is supposed to deflect up and it is going the wrong way. It's deflecting down. So once again, just like with the rudder, we have to go in and program the reverse points to change the direction of the ailerons. So we're going to enter the mode, servo setup, reverse. Now we're in the reverse functions and the aileron is channel one. So we are gonna set that to reverse and we're done. Now when we check it, when we move to the right, the aileron goes to the right and it lifts up. So now that we've got that correct, we're going to have to make sure it is absolutely level with the wing on both sides and we will make those adjustments. Okay, now we're going to go over some of the basic instructions on how an RC plane works and flies, what makes it change direction and so on. So what we're looking at now is if you look straight down the airplane, there's the rudder. And when I push it this side or that, what's going to happen as soon as I push the rudder this way, the plane is going to want to yaw. To this side. If I push it this way, it's going to want to yaw to this side. A another big part of it is the elevator. And when I pull on this, you see that go up and down? Well, when I pull up on it, the plane is going to come up towards the canopy. That means as I pull like this, the plane is going to want to go like that. If I push, the plane is going to want to go like that. Because what it's all based on is the air pressure hitting that surface. And as the air pressure hits it, it deflects it like this and moves it up and down. Conversely, when I pull on it this way, it still goes towards the top of the canopy. This control isn't necessarily an up and down control. It just makes the plane go exactly towards the canopy. And if I push it down, it goes towards the gear. Last but not least are the ailerons. When I push the ailerons like this, the plane will rotate that way. If I push it like this, the plane will rotate this way. It's really that simple and it based on the fact that when the air hits it, it deflects the surface in the direction it goes. If this surface is up, the air pushes on it just like this and it pushes it that way. Well, this is a typical flight simulator. This is real flight and it's the one that I use and I like. Um, as you can see, a very authentic looking airplane and a nice airport and it's a really nice experience to learn to fly on the simulator because the simulator does really teach you how to move the controls and be safe. Plus it's a lot of fun because it has every type of models from RC turbine jets to quadcopters, uh, helicopters and everything in between. Plus as you can see here, it has got a lot of training modes to help you learn how to fly. field over a lake here and we're going to try and uh, fly this airplane. Now again, these are two people who have never flown one of these airplanes before, have absolutely no experience. We opened the box, we built the aircraft in under an hour and uh, this is Maria and this is Fernando. They've never done it before. Uh, I put them on the simulator for approximately maybe 10-15 minutes each and that is all the experience they have. So right now we're going to uh, put them up on a buddy box. We are going to tie two radios together, which means I'm going to have control over it until I'm ready for them to take control of the aircraft and practice learning to uh, fly the aircraft. So let's see how it goes. And I think you want to play along? Yep. Right. Thank you, Ready? Yeah. And so, you got it. Go back on the stick. Okay. Go back. You're fine. I'm not doing anything. Go take the wings. Go back. Uh -oh. I got it. I took over. Uh, wow. Uh, a little tiny bit. Less throttle. It's less okay. sensitive than. Right. Here we go. You got it. You're flying it now. Okay. Go up. There you go. Go back. Go back. I can't see. 
You're doing good. Go back. You know what? You got it. Great job. Good job. Yeah. Great job. You're flying it. So are you. Come on. Come back home. You don't turn it back. It's mm -hmm. You got it. Okay. 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 Your turn. You got it. You're flying. Turn. There are many places that you can fly your RC plane. You really just need to find some place clear of obstructions that you can fly safely that's not around people or, or homes. Most pilots would eventually want to join an RC club. They're amazing places to be and hang out. Lots of people with similar interests and you'll see a lot of great models and meet a lot of uh, wonderful people. But they are organized strictly to fly RC planes and they have a variety of different types of runways from concrete to fabric uh, to grass fields but it's a wonderful uh, exercise to go in and join a club and start meeting people with similar interests. Well we're at the field right now and we don't have an ideal spot there's no runway we don't need anything like that just a little waste area here with a little bit of grass to take off and land and as you can see these planes one has very large tires and the other one we're going to land on its belly and it will be hand launched. Uh, the Tundra has very large wheels and it can take on, off and uh, land on really tall grass and very bumpy areas. And again, the other one is much more designed for uh, just belly landing and flying a lot more like a glider so we hand launch it. As you can see, it takes off very easily. And of course, landing is nice and smooth because of the large wheels. And here we can hand launch, and you'll see very quickly here how we just belly land this really nice model. The Academy of Model Aeronautics, or the AMA, is the organization that organizes all of the RC clubs and provides insurance and a bit of structure to the hobby. Uh, they have a monthly magazine and all kind of uh, benefits for joining. But if you want to belong to a club, you will be needing to join the AMA. But of course, for your first model, more than likely flying over a pond or in a soccer field or someplace like that is where you'll probably make your first flight.